interesting because you're storing sensitive information in an entity that is now hosted on Kubernetes that, uh, you know, is made to be multi-tenant, right? So it was really funny for a long time, everybody was asking me, should I do it? Should I put Vault on Kubernetes? Because it's multi-tenant, because can I secure it? My secrets are encrypted. Are they encrypted? Are they not encrypted? Is there a management overhead to putting such a complex system like Vault uh, that is very, very, very uh, sensitive on Kubernetes? And the answer is, Yes, but with caveats, right? Um, there's a whole list of recommendations. But Vault on Kubernetes is a really interesting case because, you know, Vault itself was built to be on a distributed system. The way that it was architected was actually very much meant to kind of divide the, the content of the data uh, from the actual control of how it's moving, of its transmission. Um, it had to be built that way. It's moving secrets around. So the way that Vault works in Kubernetes is you can choose your storage option. Um, previously, in the past, you had to do it separately. So you would put it in console somewhere. You would put it maybe in a bucket somewhere. Um, now there's an integrated storage capability, which means you store that information in memory. And that provided, I mean, it was a whole host of questions, availability, right? Uh, can you gain consensus? Is there consistency? Because it's not going to be great if you have a secret that doesn't work. So many questions there, many questions about state. Um, and it wasn't until recently that Vault itself was architected to be able to do that, right? So for the long time, it was meant to be stateless in that it was deferring all the storage somewhere else. Um, now it's becoming, after Vault 1.4, now it's becoming more integrated in there. Um, and that information is encrypted by Vault itself. So it's a, it's, it's gotten better. I think it's also gotten easier to run it on Kubernetes as well. Mm -hmm.